for our first generic example that we're going to look at, we're going to have some relatively nice looking function that has some randomness in the form of a random call appearing here. The problem says determine the expected running time of the algorithm and we're going to assume that that random function generates a random integer between 1 and n with uniform distribution. This will allow us to say that the probability it takes any particular value between 1 and n, including 1 and n, is going to be the same for every single value. This will make our analysis much easier. Let's begin by trying to find out what would happen if k was a fixed value. If k was fixed, the inside of these for loops takes constant time. And those two for loops are really easy to look at. They don't have any of the loop variables appearing inside of them. So I don't have any i's appearing in my bounds here. So the runtime for lines four through eight of this code would be ck squared if k was a fixed value. k is not a fixed value though. k is a random variable that can take on any number of values. We could compute the expected runtime of this algorithm by summing up all the possible values k could take. We're going to use a different letter for this, q. We do not use k here because k is reserved for a random variable. k is inherently random. k is the act, k is the where the randomness is. q is of the value the random variable is taking. So we want to know what is the runtime when k, our random thing, is actually fixed at a value q. And what is the probability that we actually obtain that k is equal to that value q? Every single expected runtime problem we will look at, should you should start by thinking about attacking it this way. This is the formal definition, and we will see where this takes us. The runtime, when k is equal to q, we have a reasonable grasp of from what we did off to the side there in blue. This algorithm would take c q squared time. Q because Q is the actual value that we are taking on. The probability that we get any particular value, Q, would be 1 over the total possibilities. The total possibilities are N, so we have 1 over N. That is because we are generating these numbers from a, random a uniform random distribution. Now, let's plug in those values and see what we get. The expected runtime, ET of N is equal to the sum from q equals 1 to n of c q squared times 1 over n. I can factor the c and the 1 over n out, so we have c over n times the sum from q equals 1 to n of q squared. There are formulas for this, but why not bound it just to get more practice at it? So let's bound this above, less than or equal to c over n times the sum from q equals 1 to n of n squared, but plug in the largest value that q would take. This equals c over n times there's n copies of n squared. Get some nice cancellation and we get c n squared. Let's bound it below. This is greater than or equal to. The c over n is going to stay out front. This is an increasing summation the values inside of the summation are an increase fun increasing function of the summation index, so we're going to keep the second half of the terms. So my summation is going to go from q equals n over 2 plus 1 to n of q squared. I'm going to plug in n over 2 for q. Sum from q equals n over 2 plus 1 to n of n over 2 squared. This is greater than or equal to c over n times, there's n over 2 terms in that summation, and they're all n over 2 squared. Do get some, again, some nice cancellation. I get c over 8. I have a 2 and a 4 in the denominator there, times n squared. So it was bounded above by c n squared and bounded below by c over 8 n squared. So the expected runtime, e t of n, must be in theta of n squared.
a natural question might be, how does this compare to the best case and the worst case? Well, let's analyze those. The best case. The best case is when k is equal to 1. Let's scroll up to the code. If k is equal to 1, those loops both execute once and once. So it would be constant runtime. So that's theta of 1. The worst case is when k is equal to n. And we already know what does it happen, what does the runtime look like for different values of k? It's c times k squared. So it would be c n squared or theta of n squared. So this is another example where our expected runtime happened to be the same as the worst case runtime. By understanding these three different runtimes, you can get a good understanding of how might you expect your algorithm to run. Some of the time it might run very, very quickly in this case because of the best case runtime being constant, and some of the time it might take a long time because of the worst case runtime being quadratic.